Elizabeth Montgomery played the lovable witch Samantha in the hit sitcom Bewitched. But did you know that towards the end of her time on the show, she chose to rebel a little? She did this by not wearing a bra on camera, which for the time was a pretty risque thing to do. In this video, we're taking a look at why she did it, as well as some other interesting aspects of Elizabeth Montgomery's life. Join us as Facts First presents Elizabeth Montgomery Didn't Wear a Bra in Late Bewitched Seasons. Thanks to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. More about them later. Elizabeth's Last Stand while Elizabeth Montgomery was certainly appreciative of Bewitched and all it did for her career and her life, at a certain point, she was over it. She actually tried to quit after five seasons of the hit show. But ABC wasn't about to let go of a huge moneymaker like Bewitched. They offered Montgomery a lavish amount of money to stay on, and she agreed. She kept at it for three more full seasons, with the show ending after its eighth. But that didn't mean she was psyched to go to work every day by the end. Montgomery was itching to move on to new and more exciting projects projects. She felt stifled by Bewitched, since she played the same character in more or less the same settings week after week. As such, she began to rebel slightly. This came in the form of not wearing a bra on camera in the eighth season. Montgomery later admitted it was not only to show her discontent with still having to do the show, but also as a nod to the feminist movement. Despite their star clearly being ready to jump ship, the network tried the same strategy after the eighth season, offering Montgomery an even more exorbitant sum. But this time, Montgomery turned it down. And in the years after the show was canceled, this decision proved financially correct for her. That's because she owned 20% of the show's revenue. So as it went into syndication, she made millions in residuals. Bewitched and Feminism while it's a lot more common these days to see female characters on TV and in movies who have strength, power, agency, and more, it was quite rare back in the days when Bewitched was on the air. As such, it can be argued that Bewitched was an important show for the feminist movement. In her book, Culture and the Sitcom, Student Essays, author Isabel Jeffrey makes the argument that the show makes bold statements not only about gender roles, but about the expectations of society for women and the patriarchy that inhibits them. She points out that Bewitched was a female-centric sitcom where nearly all the female characters have strength. This was certainly a rarity. And yes, perhaps it was due to the fact that it dealt with magical realism, so the writers and producers felt less pressure to stick to the norms of 1960s gender roles. But regardless, the show had several female characters like Samantha, Andorra, and Serena who portrayed strength and agency that exceeded that of most of sitcom females. Jeffrey even points out that Tabitha, Samantha's daughter who appears later on in the series, is given powers right away. This makes her immediately more powerful than all the males on the series. And a strong feminist ideal was displayed with the way Montgomery's Samantha treated Tabitha. Rather than being told to be ashamed of being different and more powerful, Tabitha is encouraged by her mom to take pride in who she is and embrace her powers. With these elements in mind, Jeffrey says the show's great power is that it invites a legit conversation about female issues and empowerment. And that's not something that can be said about many shows of the era. With inflation and the increasing cost of living, it's difficult to stay on budget to save for retirement. Having some extra guidance with budgets can help, and that's where Rocket Money comes in. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. The personal finance manager allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, monitor your credit score, and build your savings all in one place. Rocket Money can see if you have recurring charges for subscriptions you forgot about. From there, they cancel unwanted subscriptions for you with just a tap. You never have to get on the phone or try to hunt down the cancel button. Inside the platform, you can set budgets and monitor your spending for those categories. If you go over budget, you'll get friendly notifications that help you stay on track. You can also monitor your credit score. With complete access to your credit reports and history, Rocket Money alerts you of important changes that impact your score and offers you insights on ways to improve it. Rocket Money is trusted by 3.4 million members and counting. To try it out for free today and unlock more features with premium, head to rocketmoney.com slash faxverse or click the link in the video description. Activism and Charitable Work 
Elizabeth Montgomery certainly left her mark on the world of TV, but it could be argued that she left an even larger one in the worlds of political activism and charitable work. She was known for being a champion of left-leaning political causes and worked tirelessly to help them. And unlike some celebs who simply lend out their name for a cause but don't do actual work, Montgomery liked to put her blood, sweat, and tears into causes she held dear. She donated money and gave a ton of her energy and time to various causes that were important to her. These included women's rights, gay rights, rights, and outreach to disabled people. She had a particular passion for spreading awareness of AIDS and promoting research for it. In 1992, Montgomery was one of the Grand Marshals for the LA Gay Pride Parade. Montgomery was a fierce opponent of the Vietnam War and continued to speak out against transgressions of the US government throughout the years. She offered her talents as a voiceover artist for two documentaries that were harsh assessments of US foreign policy. One was called Cover Up Behind the Iran-Contra Affair, released in 1988. The other was its sequel, which was released in 92 and called The Panama Deception. The latter won an Academy Award. Her charitable work was just as important to her, especially as she neared the end of her life. Though she died in 1995, she was hard at work in 94 with various charities. That year, for example, she produced a handful of PSAs promoting Learning Ally, a nonprofit that created recordings of educational books designed specifically for the disabled community. She also volunteered with the organization and lent her voice to one of their recordings, a version of the 1952 best-selling poetry book When We Were Very Young by A. A. Milne. Now let's talk about some other interesting facts about Elizabeth Montgomery. She accidentally created a Samantha Boom. The name Samantha wasn't all that popular in the era when Bewitched was first put on the air. But the show was so successful, and Montgomery was such a popular actress, that her character's name suddenly became hugely common as a name given to babies. So if your name is Samantha, there's a decent chance you can thank Elizabeth Montgomery and the makers of Bewitched for that. She was nearly in a Hitchcock movie. One of Montgomery's early roles was in an episode of Alfred Hitchcock Presents, and while we obviously know her as a comedy powerhouse, her performance for the legendary director showed how versatile of a talent she was. In fact, Hitchcock was so thrilled by her performance, he wanted her to play a part in his upcoming film, Marnie. She was to play the sister-in-law of Sean Connery's character. Montgomery probably would have liked to have done it, too. But unfortunately, she was unavailable due to a scheduling conflict. So Hitchcock had to search elsewhere, and the part eventually went to act actress Diane Baker. She has several connections to Lizzie Borden. After playing a wholesome and magical character on Bewitched for so long, Montgomery looked to branch out in her post-Bewitched career. Right away, she played two roles that were decidedly unlike Samantha Stevens. The first was as a rape victim in 1974's A Case of Rape. This was certainly a dark departure from the lighter fare of Bewitched. For her effort, she got an Emmy Award nomination. She leaned into this experience by next taking on the role of accused murderer Lizzie Borden. This was in The Legend of Lizzie Borden in 1975. She shined in the role, earning yet another Emmy nod for it. However, her connection to Borden went beyond portraying her in a movie. After Montgomery's death, a genealogist traced back Montgomery's family tree and discovered she and Lizzie Borden were related. It was distant, the two were sixth cousins, but still a remarkable coincidence. Her famous nose twitch one of the most famous aspects of Bewitched was the slight nose and lip twitch Samantha did whenever she worked her magic. Accompanied by a slight bell melody, the twitch would indicate to the audience that she was about to fix a problem that could only be fixed with a paranormal skill set. And yet, it wasn't simply something the writers came up with on a whim. Montgomery's real-life husband was Bewitched producer William Asher. Asher had previously noticed that Montgomery did this exact nose and lip twitch whenever she was nervous about something. He found it so intriguing and endearing, he worked it into the show. She's part of the Salem witch lore. Even though Montgomery's character of Samantha was a sitcom witch, she somehow managed to become part of witch-based American lore. As we remember, the Salem witch trials were a horrible incident in early American history when women in the small Massachusetts town were unfairly accused of being witches and some were even put to death. The incident was so infamous, it spawned the phrase witch hunt. However, nowadays the Salem witch trials are often thought of in a lighter sense, and the town itself has embraced its part in the scandalous time and its witch-based decoration themes, and tours draw a ton of visitors every year. It was in the spirit of this take on Salem and witches that led to a bronze statue of Samantha Stevens being erected there. The statue went up in 2005, and visitors can pay tribute to a fake witch being honored among real fake witches. Now it's time to hear from you. Are you a fan of Elizabeth Montgomery? What's your favorite episode of Bewitched? Let us know in the comments section below.